Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, many people have asked me about a fight that really appeals to the boxing hardcore. This is a major moment for us. It's middleweight champion Miguel Cotto against former middleweight champion Daniel Gill. Now let me say this. Had this fight happened before Cotto got together with Freddie Roach, and Freddie Roach looms over this, I would have taken Daniel Gill. Right? The reason is simply... To me, Daniel Gill is one of the most mentally tough guys in the sport. I think mental toughness matters a great deal. This is a guy who went to Germany and who beat Felix Stern. This is a guy who went to Germany and who beat Sebastian Sylvester. Right? I believe Gill has faced guys who were better in their prime than Miguel Cotto. I would encourage everyone, and I know I'm in the minority, I would encourage everyone to revisit Anthony Mundine. Right? I thought the first Gil Mundine fight is a classic. The second fight, Daniel Gil dominated at times. Right? I consider Anthony Mundine the only man, by the way, to stop Shane Mosley. Stop him. I consider Anthony Mundine to be really one of the more underappreciated guys in the sport. Gil also held his own and beat Roman Karmazin. Now this might be a name a lot of people have forgotten. I'm telling you, Roman Karmazin in his day was hell to fight, right? I think Gil is the better chess player than Miguel Cotto, up close, right? I think Daniel Gil can stand in front of a Darren Barker and can hold his own and I considered Barker to be a master boxer right people may recall Barker's the person who took Gill's title Gill knocks him down on a picture perfect hook to the body it just cannot be thrown any better I would argue Gill got job that night but Daniel Gill has been in against big-time chess players Darren Barker Anthony Mundine, Roman Karmazin, right? All of these guys could handle themselves in a phone booth. And he's held his own, right? Gill's also two-handed. Not one-handed like Cotto. Cotto has a great left hook, right? But Cotto doesn't really have a big-time right hand, right? And Daniel Gill can move. In other words, when you see him against a Felix Sturm, he doesn't allow Stern, who has one of the best jabs in boxing, to land his jab. But yet, unlike Arislandi Lara, who runs away from the pocket, Daniel Gill can stay on the outskirts of the pocket while dodging a jab. Right? I feel Daniel Gill is defensively blessed. Let me point out, too, I know the public remembers the car crash he had, and it was a car crash against Janady Golovkin. Understand, that fight had a lot of issues with it. The first round of that fight is four minutes long. Right? Janady Golovkin still, or Janady Golovkin, still is unbeaten. He's one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. In that fight, I'll concede. Daniel Gill finds himself moving too far away from the pocket, away from Golovkin, ends up on the ropes, and then gets stopped. But understand, Gill fought a very tough Jared Fletcher after that, right? Now, I know Fletcher fell apart against Billy Joe Saunders. I would argue that Billy Joe Saunders is a name you're going to hear soon. He's the underrated guy who beat Chris Eubank. Well, just to understand, Jared Fletcher was an accomplished amateur. I encourage you to Google his career here online. 
Understand he had sparred extensively before the fight with Daniel Gill. And Daniel Gill bounced back well in that fight. Slowly took that fight over. In my opinion, Daniel Gill is still Daniel Gill. Now when I look at Cotto before Roach, and there are two Cotos, right before Roach, I see a guy with an explosive left hand who's had a problem against chess players. Let's go back and revisit his fight against Demarcus Corley. Folks, Corley almost knocks him out. You think I'm kidding? Look up the fight here on YouTube. Let's go back to his fight. and We're going back several years. Pre-Roach. Let's go back to his fight against Zab Judah. Now I know that fight featured a dramatic KO and I know knockouts cause amnesia. But I want you to revisit that fight. In my opinion, Zab Judah is outboxing a then unbeaten Miguel Cotto. Let's say Cotto borrows a card from the Felix Trinidad Fernando Vargas fight and starts to hit Zab Judah low during crucial moments of that fight. Now the referee allowed the fight to continue and let the low blows just be low. It's unfortunate because today in 2015 I'm uncertain who would have won that fight without the low blows. Just understand Judah gets stopped late in that fight. Shane Mosley didn't get stopped. He went the distance against Miguel Cotto. Folks, that's a close fight. Joshua Clotty didn't get stopped. He went the distance against Miguel Cotto. That's a very close fight. Very close fight. Paulie Malinaji. <clears throat> People forget. Malinaji fought Miguel Cotto. Right? Malinaji didn't get stopped. Malinaji went the distance with Miguel Cotto. Floyd Mayweather didn't get stopped. Mayweather went the distance with Miguel Cotto. Austin Trout didn't get stopped. Trout went the distance with Miguel Cotto. Now on this list, I'll just put it to you this way. I thought Clotty beat Cotto. I thought, well, hell, the public thought. The judges thought Mayweather beat Cotto. Austin Trout beat Miguel Cotto. Right? These are the big fights Cotto had before he gets with Freddie Roach. I'm not going to count the Antonio Margarito fights. Right? Because there are issues there. Right? The first fight, there are issues. Right? Margarito takes off his gloves in the ring, right? There's blood on his hand. One wonders what would have cut his hand, right? Okay, fair enough. The second fight, I thought that fight was unfortunate because Margarito had a troubled eye and they kept stopping the fight between rounds. I'm not sure how that second fight would have played out if that fight would have been allowed to just run its course. Now let's talk about the Freddie Roach impact because it's huge. And to do this, I'm going to have to go back in history. But let me say this. Because of Freddie Roach, right, I don't know who's going to win this fight. Betting-wise, I'm on the sidelines. There are too many possibilities here. I don't even really have a read on how the fight's going to end. This isn't the kind of fight where I could say, take this guy by KO, take this guy by decision. I can't do that here. Right? Before Freddie Roach, I'd be saying, hey, I'm rolling with Daniel Gill, who I think's underrated. 
post Freddie Roach, I'm, I'm not so sure. Right? Anything could happen in this fight. I just gave you a list of technicians who have gone the distance with pre Freddie Roach, Miguel Cotto. Right? Some of them look damn good. I'm telling you, I thought Claudie beat Cotto. Right? Mayweather, Trout, reach your own conclusions. I thought Mayweather could have stopped Cotto. I believe an unspoken story of that fight is Mayweather was having problems with his hands. Right? Mayweather with two good hands stops Cotto. Cotto's getting hit flush in the 12th round. Right? Now I'm going to exclude Manny Pacquiao because Manny Pacquiao was a Freddie Roach fighter. Right? We're, we're focusing here on Freddie Roach. My advice to you is to expect a good fight. I would stay on the sidelines here because there are too many variables. Now let's go back in time. Let's talk about one of the best trainers in boxing history. A guy named Eddie Futch. Right? Because Eddie Futch looms large here. Right? Now, Eddie Futch in the early 70s had the heavyweight champion of the world. A guy named Joe Fraser who's remarkably like Miguel Cotto. Right? Joe Fraser, for those who don't know, had one of the best left hooks in history. Now understand, Fraser and Cotto are different than Manny Pacquiao. Right? Manny Pacquiao is blessed with rare hand speed. Right? Manny Pacquiao is the kind of guy whose talent is obvious. He's the guy who, drawing an analogy, would run a 4-3 40-yard dash at the NFL Combine. Right? Manny Pacquiao has hand speed and can live on hand speed. Joe Fraser and Miguel Cotto don't. Right? They don't. Right? Manny Pacquiao throws a straight left hand. He's a southpaw like those two guys. But those two guys, bread and butter, is really the left hook. Right? Fraser threw one of boxing's best left hooks in history. I would argue Miguel Cotto's left hook is on par. His left hook to the body is simply devastating. It's the power that makes Miguel Cotto. Now the reason I'm talking up Eddie Futch is because Eddie Futch was Freddie Roach's mentor. Right? Eddie Futch trained Freddie Roach when Freddie Roach was a boxer, right? Eddie Futch was a father figure to, to Freddie Roach. So let me say this. If you go back and if you look at the last fight unbeaten Muhammad Ali had in his life, right? It's the first fight. It was Bill the Fight against Joe Fraser. It was Joe Fraser who took his own. Eddie Futch is in the corner. I want you to revisit that fight early. Right now, keep in mind, this is unbeaten Ali. This is the first mega fight I became aware of ever in my life. I'm telling you, back then, people considered both of them champions. As Ali put it at the time, how could I not beat the champion? Uh, how could I not be the champion when I had the belt and am still unbeaten? Right? In the first round, you don't have to go far. In the first round of that fight, all I want you to do is to look at two things. Right? Because I believe this is the same thing that Freddie Roach is doing with Miguel Cotto. Look at Joe Fraser's footwork. In other words, he's fighting Ali, a mobile heavyweight, unbeaten. Look at how Joe Fraser systematically cuts down the ring. Right now, keep in mind, Cotto's not blessed with Manny Pacquiao's level of foot speed. Prime Pacquiao, in many ways, is a freak athlete. Joe Fraser wasn't blessed with blinding foot speed. 
these guys have a way of cornering you, of cutting off the ring, of using your movement against you. They don't run up to you and immediately start throwing punches. This is a more patient game, right? Also contrast Joe Fraser with Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston fights Ali, can't come close to cutting off the ring. Joe Fraser, very first round, is coming in at angles. He's cognizant of the squared circle, right? He's cutting off the ring on Muhammad Ali. Now, the other thing I want you to look at, understanding that Joe Fraser's Sunday punch was his left hook is how often Joe Fraser throws that left hook early. Eddie Futch didn't believe in letting guys linger. Eddie Futch didn't believe in allowing a fight to go a lot of rounds. Joe Fraser against unbeaten Muhammad Ali is in there trying to take him out. Right? Understand too. Joe Fraser's blind in one eye. He's fighting a guy with a great jab. There is no hesitation, right? Fraser looks patient, but you notice the pressure is constant. When Fraser gets inside, he starts throwing big left hooks. Suddenly, you notice Ali is up against the ropes. Suddenly, you notice Ali is having a problem with Fraser's aggression. Compare and contrast that fight to Miguel Cotto against Delvin Rodriguez. Now let me say this about Delvin Rodriguez. He faced an all-pressure fighter twice in Powell Wolak. Those two matches are classic. Powell Womack was the ultimate pressure fighter. Delvin Rodriguez on his back foot outboxes Powell Wolak. It's clear that if you come with sustained pressure on Delvin Rodriguez, right, you're going to lose. So Miguel Cotto and Freddie Roach come up with a scheme where Cotto's moving around the ring, just like Joe Fraser, right? He's moving around the ring a little bit. Doesn't quite have Joe's bob, but Cotto has other things going on. Neither Cotto nor Joe Fraser are the tallest men in the gym. Then, of course, Cotto comes in, it's lightning strikes, right? It's at angles. Comes in, lands some hellacious left hooks, just like Joe Fraser would. Takes out Delvin Rodriguez. That's the beginning of the Cotto Freddie Roach era. Then Cotto fights Sergio Martinez. Now, let me say this, and I understand it's controversial. Today, I would take prime Sergio Martinez over Miguel Cotto, right? I would argue Sergio Martinez any other day of his career would have beaten the Sergio Martinez who fought Miguel Cotto. In other words, Martinez against Cotto is a guy with a bad knee, right? Let's just say Martinez's ability to move to generate power from his legs wasn't there in the match. But still, Martinez was one of the more dominant middleweight champions. And how Cotto takes him out is impressive. More importantly, Cotto, like Joe Fraser, doesn't waste any time throwing power punches. He's throwing punches with bad intentions against Sergio Martinez early almost right out the gate, right? He's moving around the ring. He's not standing right in front of Sergio Martinez because he knows if he does that, he's going to have the same problems he had against Judah, Mosley, Clotty, Malinaji, Mayweather, Trout. Instead, he's moving around the ring. But when he comes in, that big left hand is obvious. And Freddie Roach also has him throwing that big left hand to the body. Cotto gets away from that against Austin Trout. You notice he's trying to deal with Austin Trout's jab and stuff. Now it's a quick strike Cotto. 
right? Freddie Roach is coaching him up just like his mentor, Eddie Futch, coached up Joe Frazier. Let me also say Eddie Futch, of course, was also the trainer for heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe, right? Perhaps Futch's masterpiece. And Futch, just like Freddie Roach would do later, Futch walked away from Riddick Bowe. Just like Freddie Roach walked away from Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Even though those fighters were popular box office fighters who apparently were both uninspired in the gym. So understand, this version of Miguel Cotto, the one who's not trying to outbox boxers, the one who has figured out that he can't stand in front of Floyd Mayweather, have a boxing match and expect to win, Right, The one who has figured out that he can't try to throw jabs with Austin Trout and expect to win. Right, This version of Miguel Cotto, this Joe Fraser version of Miguel Cotto, that says, hey, I have a big gun. I have a big left hand. What am I doing? Hanging around the pocket, playing chess with guys. I'm going to move around the ring. I'm going to pick my spots. I'm going to cut off the ring. I'm going to have Sergio Martinez where I want him. I'm going to have Delvin Rodriguez where I want him. Right? Put another way, Ali, he's unbeaten. I'm going to have him where I want him. Right? Cotto is going to be trying to move around the ring to cut off the ring against Daniel Gill. Now the reason I'm not taking Cotto in this fight is because of Gill's ability to move. Gill's savviness. I know he was caught up against the ropes against Janady Golovkin, but that's not who Daniel Gill is. At his best, Daniel Gill tries to keep the action around the middle of the ring. Think back to Gill against Darren Barker. Think back to Gill against Felix Sturm. Gill's a hoverer. He can move. So I'm not convinced that Cotto can move substantially better than Daniel Gill to surprise him on these quick strikes. Right? Understand, Cotto has yet to beat a middleweight with two good knees. I understand this fight is being fought at a catchweight, but If you track the weights of the fighters on their pre-fight weigh-ins, Daniel Gill has been below 160 already in preparing for this fight. In fact, it was Miguel Cotto who was up in the mid-160s, not Daniel Gill. So I think this is a difficult fight. I don't know how to read it. Right? I... I know Cotto's going to come in and he's going to try to throw some bombs early. I'm not sure if they're going to shake Daniel Gill. Gill got blown out by Janady Golovkin. Okay, fair enough. I view that fight as an outlier fight. Worst night of Daniel Gill's professional career. I think Gill has bounced back from that fight. He's already fought Jared Fletcher after it. I think Gill's going to keep this in the middle of the ring. I think Gill's the better chess player up close. I think Gill's going to be close enough to Cotto, so Cotto can't really cut off the ring on him. I think Cotto's going to have a problem with Daniel Gill always being around him. Right? I don't think Cotto's going to have the element of surprise that Joe Fraser had against Ali, right? That Cotto himself had against Sergio Martinez and Delvin Rodriguez, right? If Daniel Gill figures out the angles on Cotto's left hand, this fight's going to go several rounds. Let me also say, too, that first Margarito fight is instructive on one thing. Right? After Cotto got hit enough with hard shots, 
Koto started backing up. Right? I'm telling you, Daniel Gill hits harder than you and I want to believe. Right? What I want people to do is to just look at the end of the Roman Karmazin fight. I'm telling you, Karmazin was an excellent fighter. In fact, look at the round where Darren Barker gets dropped. Right? When Barker gets up, his legs are gone. His legs are gone. It's a miracle he was able to survive the rest of that round. Right? A miracle. Understand some Gil fights have gone the distance, like the rematch against Anthony Mundine, only because Gil was fighting an excellent defensive fighter. Right? I think Gil's underrated. I know the world thinks Cotto's going to blow through him. I don't. I think this is a competitive fight. I'll agree Cotto's going to go for the KO early. Right? Cotto's with a new promotional group. He's with Rock Nation. Right? Cotto wants to make a statement. He's been out the ring for a while. Right? Cotto, according to reports, is signed to fight Canelo. Right? And I'm sure Cotto feels the best advertising is a dramatic win here. Right? I'm just here to tell you that Daniel Gill, even though he got knocked out by Janady Golovkin, <clears throat> is a very hard guy to KO. And I'm also here to tell you that when Cotto has fought technicians who have figured out how to neutralize that left hand, a lot of the fights have gone the distance. Again, Mosley, Cloudy, Malinaji, Mayweather, Trout. So I don't have a read on this fight. I'm expecting something dramatic. This fight, I'm guessing, is going to be a fight of the year candidate. Right? I believe for the boxing hardcore, this fight is going to be fought on a very high level. Both guys are in their 30s. Both guys have been in other championship tussles. Both guys have fought top quality opposition. Right? I think Daniel Gill is going to be ready for this challenge. I think this fight is much more competitive than most of the public. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at Gambler's Advisory. Dot com. Let me also say, too, with regard to Joe Fraser, you know, he only lost to two men, right? His losses to Ali are iffy, aren't they? Had the ref done his job and not allowed Ali to illegally push down on the back of Joe Fraser's neck in the rematch, I think it's unclear whether Ali would have won that fight. By the way, it was Eddie Futch at the start of the 15th round who pulled the plug on the Thrilly in Manila. Right? Futch had that kind of gravitas with his fighter. But, of course, history now tells us there's a question on whether Ali himself would have come out for that last round. Right? The other guy to beat Al, uh, to beat Fraser was George Foreman. Right? Prime <laughs> was Prime George Foreman. You could read into that what you want. Just understand that Foreman had an excellent jab, unlike Gennady Golovkin. Right? I know people are drawing analogies. Foreman, Golovkin, right? Fraser, Cotto. Um, Foreman had a great jab. Right? And Foreman could throw very straight punches. Right? Golovkin seems to throw punches on a hook to me, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. If you have a side or if you have a betting prop that you believe is a winning prop, I hope you leave that information in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.